I have an excellent example of high quality OS engineering here. What I've got is an OS 40 FSR engine. Um, I recently picked this up. It's new in the box. It's never been run. So part of the reason for this video is I'm going to open it up, check it out, uh, get it all set up for its first run, and then we're going to take it outside and run it for the very first time. So, opening the box. I've had this open before, but uh, I've already taken some of the stuff out, but it's got a lot of paperwork with it, and it's got instructions with it. Now this, like I said, this is an example of ex excellent OS quality, and this engine was actually released to the market in 1975, and was reviewed uh, by Peter Chin in a 1976 issue. I don't recall the magazine. Uh, so this is a rather old design engine. Now it is an ABC. It does not have a ring. So the break-in procedure for this will be a little bit different. Hi Chloe. Will be a little bit different and that's kind of what I want to talk about now uh, before I look too much at the engine here is that it came with various paperwork. It came with an instruction sheet for the engine and then it came with instruction sheet for the carburetor. Well the engine when it talks about running it in it just says uh, basically to put the engine on a plane and fly it and fly it rich for the first couple of flights. It doesn't really elaborate on, you know, peaking the RPM and tweaking the needle or anything like that. It just says, for long life and peak performance, please observe the following run-in procedure. Install the engine in your model and fly it with a rich mixture needle valve setting. Let your engine run with a fast four-stroke running for the first two or three flights. Well, I don't see how you're going to fly an airplane with it running at a four-stroke uh, RPM range and fly it all. And then it says, uh, then run your engine with a slightly less rich mixture setting low two-stroke running for the next four to six flights. Well, I don't agree with that at all because I don't think that that's a good way to try and fly an airplane. Uh, now, the instruction for the carburetor is very different here. <clears throat> it basically says, uh, set it to a so total idle between 2,000 and 2,500 RPM, but it says make sure that the engine is fully broken in about one hour of total running time in short runs before operating it continuously at full throttle. So, you know, on the one hand, the instruction sheet says, you know, you can basically, it doesn't require much break-in, run it really rich, throw it on a plane and fly it, whereas this one kind of says, you know, gradually lean it out and have about a full hour of running in it and it'll be considered broken in. So what I'm going to do, and it didn't say anything in here about how to initially set the needle valve settings. So, let me take the engine out here, and it came with this little bag of tools, and I'm going to actually use these tools. Now, I have, like I said, I've previously opened this engine, and I installed a brand new Enya number 3 plug. So one of the first things I'm going to do here is just make sure my glow igniter is, is charged and ready to go. And this one looks like it might need a little bit of charge, so I'm going to probably put that one on charge here. Uh, neither of these is really glowing too heavily, so right now I'm going to go ahead and put both of these guys on charge. And we'll continue setting this engine up for its first run. So one of the nice things about this engine is it has a bronze insert here for the glow plug. That kind of helps if you happen to install your plug and over torque it or whatever helps preserve the head of the engine OS went away from that type of construction in the 80s now by judging by the vintage look of this box I'm not sure I never I wasn't flying planes or involved in the hobby in the 70s so I'm not sure how old this engine really is but to, I'm telling you it's at least 25 to 27 years old I'm not exactly sure when they stopped making the uh, 40 FSR, but that's easily an early 80s vintage engine box here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to set my carburetor so that uh, when I close it fully it doesn't kill the engine. And typically the rule of thumb for that is use like a T-pin and set it so it's about a sixteenth of an inch from being fully closed. And I can see here uh, this carb is actually being fully closed, so I'm going to loosen this adjusting nut here, this lock nut. 
so I can run this screw down a little bit at a time. And then I just so happen to have a T-pin here. And I'm going to kind of just set it so I can just fit the tip of that T-pin in there. That's a little bit too much. Right about there looks good. And then I'm going to lock this thing down again. So hopefully this will be a setting that when I go to run it, it'll idle and not die. Okay, so that's set. Now the next thing I'm going to do here is my needle valve is fully closed. Uh, from experience, that is just something I happen to know since I've run a lot of these engines, I'm going to open this needle valve, uh, let's say three turns. Well, let's do two and a half turns fully. And it has a set screw here so that you can install a, an extension on there, but I like to use that as my center or my uh, reference point. So it's fully closed now, so I'm going to go one, two, let's do three full turns from open, from fully closed. Open it three full turns, and that should be a good starting point for running this engine. Now, the next thing I want to do here is I want to install my silencer. For that I want to put a little drop of oil on these screws. Little screw threads here just so they thread in there easily. Now this particular engine is a little tougher because the screws go in from this side. So you kind of have to get a small Allen stock and they've provided one in here. I kind of like to use my ball wrench because I can, it allows me to get my little bit of a different angle in there to get that thread started. driver definitely allows you to get a little bit of a different angle so you can get these things started. And then you can kind of get in here with the L side and snug it down. Now this did not come with a gasket, but being of high OS quality I'm not expecting any issues there. So now the final thing I need to do to get this thing ready to run is just for giggles, I've never had any oil or anything in this at all. I'm going to drop just a couple drops of oil here on that. Rotate this over a few times. Actually, it's got such good compression, I really can't even rotate it over by hand. So the final thing I'm going to do here is strap a 10-6 prop on this thing, and then we'll take it out and we'll run it for the very first time.